What's going on everybody? Welcome to this month's 220 Mastermind video. I'm Matthew Moivon. Today we're going to go through something that even I continue to struggle with but I've gotten a lot better at since I became an entrepreneur. It's productivity which basically means when you have to get things done can you buckle down and get them done but not just get them done get them done really well and without feeling completely overwhelmed stress and exhausted. Okay, now these are skills that you're going to use for the rest of your life, and the better you get at them, the more you're going to be able to get done, the more you're going to be able to manage and organize, the more successful you're going to be, and the happier you're going to be because you're not going to be overwhelmed, stressed, and exhausted all the time. You'll still have some of those feelings some of the time, but the better you get at these skills, the more you'll be able to manage, the more successful you'll be. And you can start implementing these even now to start building really good habits that are gonna pay off in the long run. So what I wanna to do today, instead of getting into everything we can about time management and productivity, which could take a long, long, long time, we're gonna focus on five keys that I, as an entrepreneur, have been able to use or still use when I really need to get things done. This is when I'm really busy, when I know I have something that's really important or that requires a lot of thinking an uninterrupted time of, of what we call deep work where you can't just do this while you're watching TV or, or while you're listening to a brand new album from your favorite artist, right? These are five things that have completely changed the, the way I've been able to get work done. And, and we've seen these work for Joseph. We've seen these work for a lot of the young professionals and a lot of the students that we work with. So hopefully you can take at least a couple of these and implement them, if not all five. So let's get into it. So number one, and this is actually in your Kickstarter in the live section, it's called the block calendar. And I discovered this actually after I left my corporate job and became an entrepreneur. And it is completely, if I, if I could recommend any tool from this, it would probably be the block calendar. It has changed the way that I work and I'm able to get things done, and even though I'm busier and, and have more on my plate than I ever have, I, I am able to manage it successfully because of my block calendar. And what the block calendar is, is a regular view. So if you think about coming into your week, right? So, so it's Sunday, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out, okay, what does my week look like this week? A block calendar is basically laying out everything that you have to get done ahead of time and blocking off time for all of the activities, all of the events, all of the work time that you need to get your most important goals and non-negotiables done. So what do I mean by that? Non-negotiables would be things like school and class or work or uh, practices or meetings for organizations that you're a part of. Things that no matter what, you're going to be having to go to. Those are your non-negotiables. Even things like sleep. You can't pretend that you don't have to sleep seven or eight hours a night to be at your most productive self. So you have all those things in there. And then once your non-negotiables and all of your uh, uh, events are in there, the, the things that maybe don't happen every week but that are happening this week, and, and this goes on every week, guys, but you, you have that in there. And then what that does is it allows you to see the pockets where you have time to get all of your most important things done, like your homework or your uh, extra work that you have to get done for your job. Or if we're talking about things in your Kickstarter, like your most important goals, working on your passion, developing your passion project, getting better, making time to practice, learn, connect with people, connect with mentors, develop better relationships, improve your network all the things that really matter to you, what you need to be able to do is not pretend that you're going to fit it in when you don't have time. You're, you need to make time for it. And what the block calendar does is it actually allows you to do that on a consistent basis so that you know, for example, if you have a break in the middle of the day for two hours on every single day or even a couple days a week or one day a week, you can say, okay, I'm going to block off that time for nothing else other than X, other than this project or this assignment or other than this thing that I have to get done for work or this scholarship application that I have to fill out. And what that does is it allows you to manage a lot 
because during that time, you really value working on that one thing that's super important as opposed to getting distracted by all these other things or trying to fit in too many things in that period and not ending up getting anything done or anything meaningful done. Because there's going to be things where, like I talked about at the beginning, it requires, it's it, these are the things that you can consistently put lower and lower in your to-do list that you know you, you put it off because it takes a lot of thinking, a lot of a lot of time and a lot of a lot of deep work and effort, and, and what block calendars allow you to do is is make time for those things, and it, it allows you to make time for the fun things too. We highly encourage, and even we do this. You block off time for fun things, things like your favorite sports team playing, or concerts that you're going to, or or dinner with friends that you have scheduled, or, or uninterrupted time with family, or even you know blocking off time to watch one of your favorite movies. But what it does is it allows you to really know pretty well what your weeks look like going into them so you can move the pieces around when you need to. Even even if you need to change it, it's our, the structure's already there so you can make sure you have time for what you need to get done. And if, for example, you need to work ahead one week because the next week is going to be super busy or there's not going to be that same structure, you already know that so that you don't get caught off guard when you get to that week. So definitely check out that section in your Kickstarter. It takes you basically through step by step, no matter which platform you want to use, how to create your block calendar. Like I said, if I, I could I could recommend one, one tool from from this video, it would be that one. Number two, not as in depth, but very important. Use your weekends and, and the weekends, especially if you're in school or or working. Definitely, you need to use as a time to rejuvenate, relax, get organized, sleep in, feel better, whatever that is. But it's also a humongous opportunity to make progress on your big time goals. So, while, like we said, you need to balance and, and, and make sure you're recovered for the next week and, and mentally there and, and stable and healthy and having fun. You also need to make sure that if you're super busy during the week and don't have time for your passion goals or don't have time for a lot of those things that are really important to you, use it. Intentionally schedule your weekends. One of my favorite people that I, that I talk about all the time, Tim Ferriss, says, if you don't know by Monday or Tuesday what you're doing this weekend, then there's a good chance that you're going to just end up doing nothing. And what you should do is, is really intentionally say or even set a calendar reminder by Tuesday that I know what I'm going to do this weekend. And, and when, when we say, I know what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm not saying you need to work all week on, on, on your passion project or on your homework or on, on scholarship applications, applications or whatever, but those are usually our biggest uninterrupted blocks of time where if we need to, we can get really meaningful, powerful things done. And, and maybe it doesn't happen every weekend or both days on the weekend, but definitely use your weekends as a time to make progress on the goals that really matter to you. And if they really matter to you, then hopefully it doesn't feel as much like work. It should be fun. It should be something that you actually get excited to work on. So maybe you don't sleep in you know, until 10 or 11 o'clock or noon. Maybe you actually go to bed at a decent time on Friday. It doesn't have to be you know, 9 o'clock, but it could be a little bit earlier than maybe you're used to. And you could get up, wake up, grab a cup of coffee, which is what we love to do, and, and just get after it for a couple hours. And then you still have the rest of your weekend to, to do all the other stuff that you, you want to make time for on the weekend. So that that's tip number two is use your weekend. Number three, eliminate distractions. Now, this is a funny one because we define distractions a lot differently, a lot differently than a lot of our students initially do. So when I think about no distractions, I'm talking about the TV is off. You're not listening to music that has words in it that's gonna that are gonna distract you. You're in a room by yourself or where you're isolated. You're not in in a room where you're tempted to talk to people unless you're doing group work. But you know, most there's a lot of times where you're gonna have to buckle down and be by yourself and get things done. And, and you are totally focused. You're not checking your phone. You're not texting a lot. You are seriously honoring that block in your block calendar and buckling down and getting things done. I even recommend turning off notifications for all of your social media and your text while you're doing that. And why that, that is, is we say we're going to 
you know, buckle down. We've got our, our, our music in, even if it's productive music, and we're ready to go. But as soon as we get notification that we have a Snapchat that we need to look at or, or somebody mentioned us on Instagram or DM'd us on, on another platform, we are so tempted not to look at it. As, as disciplined as we can be, I, I consider myself pretty disciplined, but if I get a direct message on Snapchat, somebody actually sent me something they want me to look at, it's super hard for me not to look or a group me or whatever it is. So what I, what I do is I either turn my phone on, upside down so I can't see the screen or I turn off, make sure notifications are turned off on my computer or both places, and I'm just focused on what I need to get done. So that that's all, all up for debate. I understand that that may sound like really hard to do, but when you think about it, if you really buckle down during that block time, then you can do all of the messaging and, and social media time you want as soon as you get what you need to done. But if you're intermittently doing it in between, you lose focus, you, your thoughts get interrupted, and it's really hard to get back in once even, especially if you're trying to get back in multiple times with different texts and, and Instagram and, and Snapchat and all of the different email and social media. and All of that stuff should really be put aside while you're doing that deep, meaningful, productive, passionate work. So number three, eliminate distractions, and I would really challenge you to be honest with yourself about what actually distracts you and if you're distracted and, and, and challenge you to go a, a couple steps further than you think you need to to really make sure that you're not going to get distracted during those periods. Okay, So honor those block calendar times by not getting distracted and not setting yourself up in a way to be really productive. All right, number four is prioritize. So this one is also pretty tough because – Especially in today's society, whether you're in high school, college, or even in the young professional world, for some reason, busyness has become a status symbol. So if you're really busy as a young professional, that means, oh, wow, people must really value you at work. You must be getting paid a lot. You must be involved in it a lot. You must be really successful. In college, it's Wow, you, you must be involved in a lot of stuff. You must be doing really well in school. You know, you must have a lot of friends and a great social life because all of those things usually lead to jobs at the next level. And then going down even a level in high school, it means, okay, if you are really busy with all of your stuff, then you you're, must be a successful high, high school student, which means you're more likely to get into college because we're always focused on being as well-rounded as we possibly can. What's really tough is it's hard to get really good at something without devoting a lot of time exclusively to that. Unless you're LeBron James and you can play basketball and football and, and have scholarships for both, you probably need to focus on less things than you currently are. Students and, and people today are making themselves busier than they ever have before because of the things we talked about, because of what they think it takes to get to the next level. But what that actually does is make you a generalist. You're good at, or, or maybe you're pretty good at a lot of things, but there's nothing that you're super good at or, or, or you know, the best in your state at or the best in the country at. And, and you don't even have to be those things, but devoting specifically time to really hone your craft and get better so that you're focused on one thing and really moving the needle as opposed to being involved in all these things spread really thin and not moving the needle that much, it really wears down on you. You get burned out. You, there, you, you feel like you can't think, you can't focus, you can't concentrate, you don't sleep well, you don't, you don't produce to the level that you're normally used to, so you have to stay up longer, and it's just a, a vicious cycle where I would really challenge you to not just prioritize like Netflix versus your homework or uh, you, you know a, a party over something something else that's meaningful to you like a passion project. I'm even talking about eliminating commitments that you're committed to. So maybe you don't need to be a part of this board for for moving forward. You know this group in school that. You're involved in because you know it looks good, but it's not something you're necessarily really passionate about or as passionate about as some of your other stuff. And what that does 
is it allows you to free up time to get better at that other stuff, focus on your health, being really productive, and getting good at those things that, that ultimately are really going to matter to you. And you're going to be able to produce better results that, despite popular belief, actually make you more attractive to that college or more attractive to that employer or to that next job. So really focus on saying, am I doing this because I'm really, I really care about it and I'm passionate about it and I want to get better at it? Or am I just in it because I want it to look good on my resume or my college application or, or for my next employer? Okay, so I'd really challenge you to take your prioritizing to the next level. That's really helped me. And number five, set a compelling goal. So that's what the Kickstarter is all about. That's what we're all about. We have to do this for ourselves personally. I do this all the time for, for 220, for the things I'm responsible for. And the reason you have to set a compelling goal is because if your day-to-day, -day, these blocks, these, these tasks that you have to do, don't fit into some larger goal that, that's really compelling, that really matters to you, that, that aligns with your passions, your values, then it's always going to be hard to get motivated and sit down and do the hard work that needs to be done to get that extra practice in or that extra reading in or that extra development in or that make that extra connection and reach out and step out of your comfort zone. All that stuff sounds good, but if it doesn't connect to some compelling future goal that you have that really matters to you, it's going to continue to be more and more challenging. So what you need to do is be able to line that up with a compelling goal, a compelling vision, a compelling future for you that gets you really excited. And that's what the Kickstarter, that's what all of our 220 programs are all about is it's great to have these specific productivity skills. Don't get me wrong. They, they are, they are game changer, but if it doesn't fit into some greater context of why you want to be more productive, it's always going to be a, a really tough challenge to sit down and get the meaningful things done. So make sure if you haven't already, fill out that Kickstarter and continue to revisit it. Continue to ask yourself, why do I want this stuff? Is this, does this really matter to me long term? And, and don't be afraid to ask why multiple times to really dig in to the meaning behind a lot of your goals or your compelling vision. And make sure that your your twelve week goals line up. Make sure they challenge you enough, but also make sure that you know with the right productivity, the right commitment, the right team around you, you can achieve these goals so that you get excited to do them. So so that's number five is to make sure that all this productivity, all of the things you do every day, every week, fit into a context that gets you excited. So that's the five productivity tips that have helped me tremendously. I've, I've, I've had a lot of trial and error with these guys, but trust me, when you can really focus on making uninterrupted time for yourself to get the meaningful things done using some of these techniques, you'll be amazed at what you can do get done. Maybe it's the same level. It's probably going to be more, but what's even more important is you're going to feel better. You're not going to be so drained, exhausted, and burnt out because I know that that's a problem. For a lot of you guys and trust me it used to be for me and and it's something that i've continued i'm continuing to get better at these five things have helped tremendously as always guys let us know if you have questions i hope you enjoyed this video if you let us know for next month what you want to see and we'll try to try to have a video around that answering some of your questions but i hope your goals are going really well i hope the summer is going really well as always reach out let us know how we can help and happy fourth of july dream big never settle live 220